Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 13 on basic statistics. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient was given by Carl Pearson and it is a numerical measure of linear relationship between two variables. It is also known as Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. So definitions are different for sample as well as population data. So first we have written the definition for sample data. Pearson coefficient of correlation for sample data is denoted by R suffix xy or simply by R and is defined as Rxy equal to Sxy divided by Sx times Sy. This Sx is standard deviation for variable x and this sy is nothing but standard deviation for variable y both are sample standard deviation because we are discussing this for sample data and this sxy is defined by this formula sxy equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by n minus 1 where x bar and y bar are sample mean for variables x and y respectively. So this new term is known as covariance between two variables x and y and is denoted by s suffix xy for sample data and is given by sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by n minus 1 and we are familiar with this formulas this is sample standard deviation for variable x and is given by square root of sigma x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 and sample standard deviation for variable y is given by square root of sigma y minus y bar square divided by n minus 1. So as I discuss this sxy is called covariance between two variables x and y Sometimes it is also denoted by this notation COV between X and Y. And this SX and SY are standard deviations of X and Y respectively. So we can substitute all these values of SXY, SX and SY in this definition of sample correlation coefficient and we obtain this RXY equal to this we have substituted for sample covariance Sxy. This is sample standard deviation Sx, Sy. So here in the denominator we can see we will have square root of n minus 1 into square root of n minus 1. That will be n minus 1 and it will cancel out with this n minus 1. And we have this formula for sample correlation coefficient Rxy equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by square root of sigma x minus x bar square times y minus y bar square. So we can use this formula directly for computing correlation coefficient where we have to first compute mean of x bar and y bar. So this is the sample mean for x bar sum of all the x values divided by total values. Similarly, sigma y is sum of all y values divided by total number of y values. So we can use this formula directly to compute sample correlation coefficient. And generally the data given is always for a sample. So we will use this formula in computing correlation coefficient unless it is specified that we have to use population correlation coefficient. Now what is the difference between sample correlation coefficient and population correlation coefficient? So if we are given a population data then population correlation coefficient will be denoted by this notation rho xy. Now here we have written sample covariance instead of sample covariance we will replace it by population covariance and this sample standard deviations will be replaced by population standard deviations. So that we have written for population data. 
Pearson's coefficient of correlation for population is denoted by rho xy and is defined as sigma xy divided by sigma x times sigma y and where population covariance is defined by this sigma x minus population mean for x times y minus population mean for y divided by total number of observations or population size which we denote by capital N and uh, sample covariance was sigma x minus sample mean y minus sample mean divided by n minus 1 so this is the difference the only difference is here we divide by number of observations minus 1 and here we keep number of observations as it is so this is the only difference for sample and population covariance so if it is specified that we have to use population correlation coefficient then we have to use this formula and we are familiar with population standard deviation formulas sigma x is given by square root of sigma x minus population mean whole square divided by n this is population standard deviation for x and this is population standard deviation for y where this mu y is population mean definition of mu x and mu y are same for population as well as sample sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations now if we substitute all these values in the formula of this population correlation coefficient then we will obtain the same formula which we obtain for sample correlation coefficient sigma x minus mu x y minus mu y divided by square root of sigma x minus mu x square times sigma y minus mu y square so instead of mu x and mu y we have x bar and y bar in the formula for sample correlation coefficient if we compare these two formulas here we have x bar y bar so this is sample correlation coefficient and if we replace sample mean by population mean we have population correlation coefficient so we must be familiar about this distinction between population correlation coefficient and sample correlation coefficient sometimes they can ask the definition of sample correlation coefficient as well as population correlation coefficient in that case we have to remember these differences in the two formulas and uh, if nothing is specified in the given question we will always use the formula for sample correlation coefficient because generally the data given is always for a sample so we will use this formula to compute correlation coefficient if it is not specified and if it is specified that we have to use formula for population then we will use this formula both formulas are same as i discussed the only difference is in the notations here we are using notations for population means and here we are using notations for sample means but these two formulas are different due to the differences in these formulas here in all these cases we divide by n minus 1 and in the population definition we divide by total number of observations so that is the only difference in both the definitions so with this in mind we try to compute co correlation coefficient for given problem so here we have taken this problem which was asked in gtu winter 2019 exam we are asked to find out coefficient of correlation between variables x and y for given data so here we are given values of x and y we can count the number of values 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so there are six values for each of the two variables and we have to obtain coefficient of correlation and as we know the data generally given is always for sample so we will use this formula for sample correlation coefficient 
आर एक्स वाई इक्वल टू सिगमा एक्स माइनस एक्स बार टाइम्स वाई माइनस वाई बार डिवाइडेड बाय स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सिगमा एक्स माइनस एक्स बार स्क्वायर टाइम्स सिगमा वाई माइनस वाई बार स्क्वायर सो वी रिक्वायर वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स बार एंड वाई बार फॉर दैट सो दैट वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड आफ्टर दैट वी विल रिक्वायर ऑल दीज वैल्यूज एक्स माइनस एक्स बार टाइम्स वाई माइनस वाई बार दिस वी विल रिक्वायर फॉर दिस सम फॉर दिस समेशन वी विल रिक्वायर स्क्वायर ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स बार एंड फॉर दिस वी विल रिक्वायर वाई माइनस वाई बार सो वी विल रिक्वायर दिस कॉलम्स फॉर द टेबल फर्स्ट वी विल राइट वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स देन वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई देन एक्स माइनस एक्स बार वाई माइनस वाई बार देन वी विल मल्टीप्लाई दिस टू सो देर विल बी वन कॉलम फॉर दिस देन स्क्वायर ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स बार एंड स्क्वायर ऑफ वाई माइनस वाई बार सो आई हैव प्रिपेयर द टेबल इन दिस वे दीज आर द वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स देन वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई सो बिफोर गोइंग फॉर अनदर कॉलम्स वी फर्स्ट सी वॉट आर दी समेशंस ऑफ वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई सिगमा एक्स इज थर्टी सिक्स सिगमा वाई इज सिक्स जीरो सो वी हैव कॉम्प्यूटेड एक्स बार एंड वाई बार एक्स बार इज सिगमा एक्स डिवाइडेड बाई एन सिगमा एक्स इज थर्टी सिक्स एन इक्वल टू सिक्स सो एक्स बार इज सिक्स वाई बार इज सिगमा वाई डिवाइडेड बाई वाई एन सिगमा वाई इज सिक्स जीरो एन इज सिक्स सो वैल्यू ऑफ वाई बार इज टेन सो नाउ वी ऑप्टेन एक्स माइनस एक्स बार दैट इज एक्स माइनस सिक्स वाई माइनस वाई बार दैट इज वाई माइनस टेन सो फॉर दिस कॉलम वी सब्सट्रैक्ट सिक्स फ्रॉम ईच वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स टू माइनस सिक्स दैट इज माइनस फोर फोर माइनस सिक्स विच इज माइनस टू फाइव माइनस सिक्स माइनस वन सिक्स माइनस सिक्स इज जीरो एट माइनस सिक्स विच इज टू इलेवन माइनस सिक्स फाइव then y minus y bar y bar is 10 so we subtract 10 from each value of y 18 minus 10 8 12 minus 10 2 10 minus 10 is 0 8 minus 10 which is minus 2 7 minus 10 is minus 3 and 5 minus 10 is minus 5 then we require this product product of x minus x bar and y minus y bar so we multiply all these values minus 4 times 8 is minus 32 minus 2 times 2 which is minus 4 minus 1 times 0 which is 0 0 times minus 2 2 times minus 3 which is minus 6 5 times minus 5 is minus 25 then we require square of x minus x bar so we square all these values minus 4 square is 16 square of minus 2 4 square of minus 1 is 1 square of 0 is 0 square of 2 is 4 square of 5 is 25 and finally we square all these values y minus y bar 8 square is 64 square of 2 4 square of 0 is 0 square of minus 2 which is 4 square of minus 3 is 9 and minus 5 square which is 25 and here we sum all these values minus 32 minus 4 all these values and we find that summation is minus 67 sum of x minus x bar square is 50 sigma y minus y bar square is 106 so once we have all these values we substitute them in this formula and we can easily compute correlation coefficient coefficient of correlation is rxy equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar square root of sigma x minus x bar square sigma y minus y bar square this sum is minus 67 this is 50 sigma x minus x bar square and this one is 106 so we substitute all these values and after doing calculations we obtain that coefficient of correlation is minus 0.92 so in this way we can compute coefficient of correlation easily 
using this formula we just have to remember this formula r equal to sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by square root of sigma x minus x bar square times sigma y minus y bar square and we will make one remark that coefficient of correlation always lies between minus 1 and 1 and if r equal to 0 that means there is no linear relationship between two variables if r equal to 1 then we have strong relationship and because this value is positive we can say that relationship is strong positive if r is minus 1 we can say that relationship is strong but it is strong negative relationship so in general it is not possible that we will get exact r equal to 1 and minus 1 but values of r near to 1 indicates that there is a strong relationship between two variables similarly values of r near to minus 1 indicates that there is a strong negative relationship so here we can see value of r is minus 0.9 if we round off to one decimal place it is very near to minus one so this shows that there is a strong negative relationship between given variables and we can observe here as x increases here we can see x is increasing to 4 then y is decreasing here x is increasing to 5 here y is decreasing from 12 to 10 so we can see as x is increases y is decreasing so there is a strong negative relationship between x and y and that we can uh, interpret from the value of this correlation coefficient also so correlation coefficient helps us to decide the degree of relationship between two variables whether relationship is strong or poor or whether there is no relationship if r is 0 there will be no linear relationship between two variables so this is all about this lecture i hope you like it in upcoming lectures we will discuss some more problems of this type about correlation coefficient thank you